Want to avoid those crowded campgrounds where you're just packed in like peanuts? Well, check out these off-road travel trailers that we have in this video and find a nice private spot for your camping adventure. Hey guys, Mike with RV Blogger here in front of the camera and Susan's behind the camera. If you've seen us before on YouTube, welcome back to the channel. And if this is your first time seeing us, welcome aboard. Susan and I make tons of videos all about RVing, but we also want you to know about our website called RV Blogger, where we have hundreds of helpful articles all about RVing as well. And we also have a terrific Facebook group we invite you to join called RV Camping for Newbies. You can meet fellow campers, you can ask tons of questions and get all your questions answered, but it's just a great resource and a great place to have fun and learn more about RVing. And when you join the Facebook group, you get our monthly digital video magazine called RV Camping Magazine 100% for free. So we hope you'll join in on all the fun and we'll see you on the inside. But in the meantime, let's get started with our video all about off-road travel trailers. This travel trailer is the Travel Light Rove model number 14FL. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 1,775 pounds, a gross vehicle weight rating of 2,500 pounds, and that leaves the cargo carry capacity at 725 pounds. It measures in at 16 feet 6 inches long, and it sleeps up to three people. When you first walk into this travel trailer, off to the right-hand side, you have a nice comfy couch, which doubles as a bed, wraps around into the kitchen and dinette area, and it has a full wet bath in the back. So here I am at the front end of this camper where the comfy couch is, and this couch is really big. I mean, one person could probably sleep on this thing pretty easily, but the cushions are nice and thick and comfy. And to convert it into a bed, it's really pretty easy. There's a couple of D-rings on each side that you just pop, and then you pull it forward, and then you just adjust the cushion in the back, and there you go, a nice comfy bed for two. Now this bed uh, measures in at 48 inches wide and it is, whoa, 74 inches long. So it's a pretty tight fit. I mean, two people could sleep on here, but you know, you'd be bumping into each other all night long, which might not be a real bad thing. <laughs> You'll also notice that there's a window on each side so you can get a little cross breeze, couple lights overhead. We turned them off so we didn't blind the camera. And then these little brackets on each side, that's what holds up the back of the couch when it's in the couch position. And there are a couple of electrical receptacles and USB ports on the side of the kitchen uh, cabinet setup. So while you're laying in bed, you can put your phone, tablet, sort of use the kitchen countertop as a nightstand, recharge all your electronics overnight. Now the kitchen area is located right across from the comfy couch and sleeping area and there are two immediate things that I notice inside this camper and this is a really small camper but it has huge countertop space. I mean look at this, you just don't even get this much countertop space in a much larger trailer. So they've done a terrific job of setting that up and the second thing you'll notice is it's got a fireplace in here. Now you can turn the heat on and off. We have the heat off right now because we're down in Florida, so we don't need the heat. But you can still enjoy the ambiance, and you would enjoy that, I guess, when you're laying in bed at night or maybe just sitting at the dinette if you're out camping on a cool fall evening or early spring. I mean, what a great little feature to have built in. I really like it. Now, up top here, you'll notice there is a lot of storage. It's open storage, but they do have these cargo nets in here to hold things in place. It also has a wall-mounted air conditioner in here. Now, Wall-mounted air conditioners are pluses and minuses, right? Plus side is they're very inexpensive. If it breaks and you have to replace it, it's easy to replace and it's not very expensive to do so. So, you know, looking at the bright side of it and it's big enough to cool down a small camper like this too. So why go overboard with a roof mounted AC? Plus it keeps your camper shorter uh, so you can fit under more overpasses and bridges or maybe even squeeze it in a garage depending on how tall your garage doors are. Standard height for a garage is 7 feet. This is a little taller than that, but some folks do have 9 or 10 foot garage doors at home. Anyway, down below the storage and the AC, they've got a nice sink here and they side mounted the sink rather than have the faucet behind it. The reason they did that is so they could make the countertop a little narrower in here so it gives you more space 
to walk around between the countertop and the dinette table. Very nice move. Then they have a one burner induction cooktop. And I think a one burner is fine. Every now and then, if Susan and I are cooking, we need two burners. But for a weekend getaway or you know an off-road getaway, one burner's usually just fine. And then, of course, you have a mini fridge down below. And it does not come fully stocked, by the way. But here we are at the RV show. <laughs> And it does have a place up top where you can make some ice cubes too. Now you'll notice below the fireplace, right next to the refrigerator, there is some open storage under here. And I just love the fact that they have the cargo netting in place. It just, it, it actually, it makes your RV lighter not having the additional cabinet doors and the cargo netting holds everything in so it doesn't go flying around while you're driving down the road. Next to that, you've got a little bit of storage underneath of the kitchen sink. And then next to that, you've got two good size cabinets for some additional storage. So one other thing to note about this kitchen is there is no oven and there's also no microwave. So if you're needing a microwave, I would think the easiest thing you could do, maybe just be bring a small portable microwave with you. There's enough countertop space here that you could set it on the counter. And then there's a receptacle right over the edge of the counter, plug it in there and you are good to go. So just across from the kitchen is where the dinette is located. Now, a couple of really important things about the dinette. I love the dinette location in here because it's on the door side of the camper. Now, why is that important? Well, most RVs are on the opposite side of the camper. So they all come with a nice big window over them. But if your dinette isn't on the door side, you're looking outside at your sewer hoses, your water hose, all that stuff. When the dinette is on the door side, your view is of your campsite. You can see your picnic table, your fire ring. It's just a lot nicer view and you can feel like you're really camping when you're sitting at your dinette table. We always like to look out the window on ours and see what's going on out there while we're sipping coffee in the morning or whatever. Now above, you'll notice there's plenty of open storage, again with all the cargo netting to hold things in place. It's got a little radio with some speakers up here as well. And then the dinette, really comfortably can sit two people. This table will also drop down, so you could have a bed for one other person in here. So for a couple with a small child, this would probably be a really, really great setup. Now where I'm sitting right here, there's a couple controls over here. You could mount a TV up in this location. It comes pre-wired for satellite and cable. Um, and I guess, you know, if you put it on a swing arm or maybe mount it on this wall, you know, you might be able to see the TV from the bed. Not the best location, but at least they have an option for you. To sit or not to sit, that's the question. Here I am in the bathroom and I, as you know, I'm 5'11". I can't even stand up in here. And the big debate that Susan and I always have is, if you're in a wet bath, do you take your shower standing up or sitting down on the commode? Now for me, I really prefer to stand up when I take a shower. I just wouldn't want to sit on the commode and take a shower, but some people do. Let us know in the comments down below what you might do in a wet bath. Not anything you might do in a wet bath, just <laughs> if you would stand up or sit down while taking a shower in a wet bath. Now, the height in here really is pretty restricted, but again, this is a small camper, and with a wet bath, you really don't get a lot of room, but it has everything that you need. Uh, there's a nice shelf in here that you could use for your shampoo bottles, soap, all that good stuff. The wand does come off the wall, so you can use your sprayer however you need to. And of course, uh, as typical with many wet bath designs, there is a curtain that comes across, so it protects the door from getting water and then water leaking out into your camper. As far as the elbow test goes, if the door was closed, I'd have no room on this side. But on my right side, I actually have plenty of room for my elbow. One other option for taking a shower is just to use the outside shower if you prefer. This is a great setup. It comes with a little wand and it also has hot and cold control. So, you know, you don't have to take a cold shower while you're outside. So, and this way I can stand up as tall as I like. Now with these campers, you can upgrade to a solar package which can fully power you when you are off grid. Uh, you can get enough solar power from the roof and you can get three 5,000 watt inverters so you can actually run your air conditioning, your refrigerator, your fireplace, the whole nine yards using all solar power. And these units also come with a standard trailer package, 
or you can upgrade to the off-road package, which gives you bigger tires and much more ground clearance so you can go boondocking and get off the road as far as you'd like. Introducing today's sponsor, RV Snap Pad. RV Snap Pad is the world's only permanent jack pad. It's made for fifth wheels, motorhomes, travel trailers, truck campers, and much more. Snap pads were made to snap onto your levelers or stabilizer system and stay there for good. The reasons we installed snap pads on our RV are we have permanent jack pads installed at all times, we have increased stability for each landing foot, our jack feet are protected from bending or damage, we have reduced slipping or sinking on soft surfaces, and we're even protected from indirect lightning strikes. We're partnered with SnapPad to offer our viewers a special discount on a set of snap pads. Just click the link in the description below or go to rvsnappad.com, enter your RV info, and get an instant recommendation for the right size snap pads for your rig. Then use our discount code RVBLOGGER10 during checkout to get 10% off. Snap pads are made in South Carolina, California, and Indiana from recycled tire crumb. In addition to being made in the USA, Snap Pads offers additional discounts for veterans or first responders. Visit RVSnapPad.com today for more info. This travel trailer is the Ember Overland, model number 190 MDB. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 4,385 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 1,100 pounds, for a total gross vehicle weight rating of 5,485 pounds. It measures in at 22 feet 6 inches long and it can sleep up to 5 people. When you first walk into this camper you'll notice on the right hand side you have a nice comfy couch and murky bed and as you swing on around you have your kitchen area and living area all in one and then behind me here you have double bunk beds and then you have your bathroom on the other side. Here I am in the living room area and you'll notice that it's got a really nice comfy couch and it has this cool table built into it. Now these tables are really unique. We haven't really seen them designed like this in any other campers. Uh, the nice feature about them is they're super easy to take apart and move. Now there are two of these tables that come included. One can go with this couch and the other can go with the couch which is sitting across from the kitchen area. But the way they come apart is really simple. You just remove the tabletop and then you just remove this brace. It's as simple as that. So you can have your dinette table in place when you want to sit down and have a meal. You can remove it when you want to just sit here and relax and watch some TV or when you want to put your Murphy bed down. And speaking of the Murphy bed, let's go ahead and put it into the down position. First thing you have to do is just jackknife or unjackknife your sofa. There's a nice clip up here. And you just pull this down. And then just grab your mattress. It sort of tucks up under here. You just have to pull it down and then unfold it into place. And that's really it. Your Murphy bed is all set up. And the thing that we really like about the Murphy bed setup and with the dinette here is this area has three functions. It's your bed, it's your couch, and it's also a dinette table all in one. Now, in addition to that, you've got some storage up above, and then there's also some additional storage off to the side over here. One other really nice feature is it has this skylight built in, and you can have either this screen shade in place, or you can also go with a nightshade and really darken things up in here. Also has a nice big window on the side so you can open that and get a cross breeze blowing through here. And then right next to your bed you have this TV. Now the TV can actually swivel a couple of different directions so you can see it from the couch, you can see it from the bed, and it's probably in the best spot possible inside this RV. There's also a little bit of extra countertop space here. There's a couple receptacles. So if this is like your nightstand next to your bed, you can plug in, charge things, run a CPAP, whatever you need. And then there's even some more storage down below. So in the kitchen area, there are some nice size storage compartments overhead. And then you've got a regular sized microwave oven. 
Down below that, you have a two burner cooktop. They've done a nice job and actually turned it sideways so it's a front to back cooktop. This really helps to minimize countertop space that the burners use up. And then there's really not a lot of countertop space in here anyway, so it comes with this nice sink cover. And then it's got a really huge, deep, round, single bowl sink. It also comes with a big gooseneck faucet overhead. Down below the sink, there's lots of room for additional storage here. And then just next to that, you've got all these full extension drawers for all your kitchen utensils that you could possibly need. Just past the cooktop area is where the refrigerator is. And there's a really nice big storage compartment up here. I mean, this thing is... Uh oh, I just got my tape measure stuck. I'm in trouble. <laughs> ah, got it. <laughs> this thing is, oh, two feet deep. So that's a lot of storage up there. That was a whole lot of fun. Getting <laughs> my tape measure stuck. And then you have a really nice size 12 volt refrigerator here. Plenty of room, plenty of cold storage. For your RV adventures. Now right across from the kitchen is this comfy couch. This couch also serves as three things as well. So it can be a couch or you can take the, one of the two dinette tables and set it up here and you'll have a table in front of you to eat. And it also is a jackknife sofa. And so I think one small child could pretty comfortably sleep here at night. Just beyond the love seat or sofa area, you have this really nice big window here, which is terrific, lets in a lot of light. And then over top, you have all this adorable, uh, additional storage as well. Now, just beyond the kitchen and living area are the two double wide bunks, and they are really big and spacious. Both bunks have their own window and USB ports. And the best part is the bottom bunk can fold up and there's a door in the back so you can have tall storage in here like for bicycles. Or when the bunk's in place, you have storage underneath. Here I am standing in the shower in the bathroom back here. And this is a good size bathroom for a small travel trailer. Now, I'm standing in the shower. I'm 5'11 tall. There's about four inches over my head when I'm standing in here. So if you're 6'3 or taller, you're going to be doing a little crouching. But all in all, it feels pretty good. You've got a spray nozzle that's easily removable and a little dish here for soap or whatnot. There's really no place to put shampoo in here, but I guess you could, I don't know, put it on the floor, do what you have to do. Uh, one other thing that I like about this shower that it is that it does have a retractable shower door so you don't have to fool with a curtain blowing in on you. Also in this bathroom, it's got a high window, which is great for being in a bathroom. You know, you can be in here doing your business, but you've got the additional lighting and you don't have to worry about anybody peeking in and seeing anything in here. Uh, also in here, it's got all this open storage right across from the commode, toilet paper holders located in there, but you could put other uh, items in here as well, extra toilet paper, toilet chemicals, whatever you need. And then you've got this really nice vanity area here now the vanity has a corner style medicine cabinet, so that gives you a lot of room inside for storage. And then you have a really nice size single bowl sink, and then even more storage under the sink. As far as the elbow test, it passes 100%. Great bathroom size. So here we are outside of this Ember Overlander series, and it's got an outdoor kitchen, which includes a really big griddle which is easy to clean easy to take care of and it's also got a compact refrigerator to keep all your drinks and cold items nice and chilly outside in addition uh, the ember series overlander series comes standard with solar panels on the roof so you can stay charged up while you're out and boondocking in the middle of nowhere and the suspension offers some amazing features that will help you get off road and boondock in some of the gnarliest places you can find this travel trailer is the Black Series, model number HQ17. It's got an unloaded vehicle weight of 5,952 pounds, an impressive cargo carry capacity of 4,048 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 10,000 pounds. It measures in at 24 feet, 3 inches long, and it can sleep up to 5 people. When you first walk inside this RV off to the right hand side, the first thing you'll notice is the queen size bed, which wraps around into the kitchen area. Just across from the kitchen area, we have the dinette area 
and then bunk beds in the very back of this trailer and a wet bath is included as well. So walking into this camper off to my right hand side is a queen size bed. Now this is a short queen. It's 60 inches wide by 76 inches long. You'll also notice it just looks really, really nice inside of here. I always expected a Black Series RV, which are known for off-roading, to be a little more rugged and not as luxurious. But I mean, look at this headboard. It looks like a leather design, really super nice. The cabinetry is outstanding. You just push them and they pop open. And so you have some storage above. Another really nice thing they did is on each side of the bed, it's got these nice reading lights. And then you'll notice that on each side, there's also a door that you can push in. It's like a black glass door and you can hang items inside of there as well. One other thing to note on this side of the bed, you have some light controls. On the other side of the bed, there is a receptacle. Now underneath each of the nightstands, there are a couple of drawers and all the drawers are set up so you just push them and they pop open. It's a really nice design. A small drawer up top for keys and phones and such and then a door cabinet down below for additional storage and the same exists on the other side of the bed as well. Now you'll notice over my head, this is quite the control panel. <laughs> I mean, it looks like a rocket ship in here. It's but even labeled one, headquarters. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's labeled, you know, headquarters. One really cool thing about Black Series trailers is that they actually have four tanks inside of them. They have a, a drinking water tank and a general water tank. So the general tank, you would take your showers and things like that. Your drinking water is drinking water. And then they also have a gray and a black water tank. So they have lots of tank capacity. So when you're out boondocking or off-road, they have you covered for sure. So here I am standing in front of the kitchen setup. But first, I just want to note that there is a nice TV in here that you can see either from the bed or you can swivel it around and see it from the dinette location too. There's also some big windows in here, one on each side of the bed, so you can get a nice cross breeze there as well. Here I am standing at the kitchen and um, there's not much countertop space in here, so they have this large cover which can be used as your countertop. But you flip this up and you'll notice that you've got two propane burners here plus your kitchen sink. And this is sort of an airplane faucet design. You can move the faucet up and down for storage. Out of this would be your general water. And then they have another little faucet over here, which is just gonna be drinking water. Up above the kitchen sink and two burner stove, you just push on these doors, they pop right open and you have some storage above here. Now, one thing I think they overlooked a little bit is that this door does sort of hit the skylight area so uh, I'm not sure if the door needs to be adjusted down a little bit or if it's just an oversight. Down below, same deal, you push your drawers and they pop open. But one thing I wanna point out down here is, this isn't really much storage down here, but you'll notice that your water pump is located here, plus all of your water lines run through and also the filter systems here. Now, if you're out doing some wintertime camping, uh, one thing you need to do for sure is keep your cabinet doors open when you're in extremely cold weather so that the warm air inside your camper gets into this space underneath the cabinets and keeps all of this area warm as well. If you close these doors and you're in really, really cold temperatures, you're at risk for all those pipes freezing. So moving just past the cooktop and the sink, we have a built-in microwave oven above. And then we have a very good size refrigerator and freezer down below. This is a three-way fridge, so you can use it in all sorts of conditions and with different energy sources as well. Now, right across from the refrigerator, we have a dinette. And I would say, and you know, this is really a two-person dinette. It's not really a four-person. Even though this camper can sleep five people, you're really only gonna be able to seat two people here at the dinette. But you know, it's a nice spot to sit and relax. You have a nice big window over top. And then you have all of these storage compartments overhead. And they're just a really neat design. They're easy to use. You just push them and they pop open. Very, very well done. The table itself can drop down. And then this does become a bed as well. At the very back of this camper, you have bunk beds set up. One on top, one down below. One really nice feature about both of these bunk beds is that they do each have their own window. They also have reading lights and the bottom bunk also has USB ports as well. 
So here I am jumping inside the shower and in this particular trailer, they actually have a wet bath in here. Now this is a smaller trailer and to maximize space, they've gone ahead and put a wet bath in, which means that your toilet and your shower and your sink are all in one room together. The advantage is that you save space inside your trailer. Downside is when you're done taking a shower, you kind of have to wipe the whole bathroom down. So if you use the bathroom to go to the bathroom, it's not all wet. Otherwise, you end up tracking water in and out of the trailer and all through your, all through your trailer. So anyway, come on in, let's check it out. So here I am standing inside the shower and you know, there's a decent amount of space in here just sort of moving around. Uh, overhead though, there's only an inch over my head and I'm 5'11", so that gives you about six feet in here. And if I stand in the skylight, there's maybe four inches over my head. So if you're taller than 6'3", you're definitely gonna be crouching down inside of this shower. But again, it's a wet bath and it's a smaller camper. So it does tend to work. Now up top here, you've got a couple of shelves, one for storing shampoo and soap and things, and the other is a towel bar. But wait a minute, there's no shower head in here. Maybe I'll just pull this and see what happens. <laughs> this is your shower head inside of this, and it's it only comes out so far, so you know, you kind of have to duck down to use it to wash your hair. I think you might sit on the toilet. You might even sit on the toilet and do it. Yeah, I wouldn't do that, but some people might. I would stand up and take my shower. But hey, if you want to sit here, it's very convenient. For me, I'd be standing here going like this. And Susan would tell me I'm crazy. But anyway, it's a neat design. I've never seen that design before, but it's another great way to save space inside of the bathroom. Uh, it also comes with a real door for the shower door, which is fantastic. You don't have any curtains to deal with or any of that stuff. A lot of times inside of a wet bath, there's also an inside curtain that you have to move around inside the wet bath so it covers the door so water doesn't go out. But with them having a real shower door on here, you don't have that issue. And as far as the elbow test goes, well, there's no way it's gonna pass the elbow test, but there is plenty of room in here for all your bathroom time needs. So outside of this travel trailer, there's four really nice features that I wanna show you. First of all, this is one of the smaller trailers that actually comes with dual axles, which is great because you can carry more stuff, you get much more stability. It also gives you a higher ground clearance so you can go off-road, it's a much sturdier frame, and you can go boondocking anywhere you might like to go. And these Black Series are really, really built to handle that as well. Can't see it from here, but up on the roof, these units do come standard with solar panels as well, so you can recharge your battery while you're out boondocking and keep everything functioning. One other really nice feature, and we always try to cook outside when we go camping, and Black Series has an outdoor kitchen as well, so you don't have to use the inside kitchen. Now, the big advantage to that is, is when you're cooking, it creates a lot of humidity. And so that's why we don't cook inside of our camper or very sparingly. We don't want all that humidity inside of our camper, which can create mold and moisture and humidity and the inside. Smells. And the smells too. You know, the smells get captured in all of the fabric inside your RV. So if you have fabric, dinette, recliners, bedding, whatever, eventually uh, the smells can get captured in all that material over time. There's one more feature we need to take a look at, and we'll take a look at that right now. And finally, you have pass-through storage in the front of the camper. Now that you've seen all these awesome off-road travel trailers, there's only three things left to do. Number one, give us a thumbs up if you liked the video. Number two, please subscribe to the RV Blogger YouTube channel. And remember to hit the notification bell when you do, so you'll be notified every single week when Susan and I come out with a brand new video. And finally, to learn more about off-road travel trailers, just click the box right next to me here, and Susan and I will see you in the next video.